Welcome back for another tutorial. Let's jump right in. So today I wanted to show how we can get some moving tracks going in Houdini. And in order to do this, what we want to do is be able to copy one piece of geometry onto points that will then move around a curve like this video here. So this is taken from a recent project I was working on. So I just wanted to show a quick tip on how to do this in Houdini. All right. So in Houdini, I have my given points that I want to copy these track pieces onto. And then I have a curve here that represents those points, but this curve just has a lot more points and they have given normals on them. And those will come in handy later on. So first let's figure out how we're going to get these points to move succinctly along this curve. Now I want to bring up these point numbers here to explain just a little bit of what's going to happen here. So this curve is one primitive, meaning it's one, line. So if we look here, it shows it's one primitive. It starts from uh, a point zero and it goes all the way around until it gets to its end point that meets at the same position as point zero. So along this curve, there are, there, there, there are UVs essentially, or there's a UV attribute that basically defines a float value from zero at the start of the curve that goes all the way around the curve to one. So maybe here on the curve, this is, you know, point one on the U the u value and then this is point 3 on the u value and so forth. So, if we drop down an attribute wrangle, what we can do is first declare a vector here with a prim uv attribute. Okay? So, for those not familiar with vex, this is a little bit of a code snippet in order to operate on these points here. We see we have 55 points and they have an attribute called p, which is their position points here in 3D space. So, we're going to first just declare an empty vector, a vector being three elements. So if I was to create a vector here, we see it's an X, Y, Z element. So that's all that variable is. So what we're going to do is we are going to use a function called X, Y, Z dist. Now, if we have a function here in Houdini that's declared and it's, it's highlighted blue, we can click on it anywhere and we can click F1 on our keyboard and it will bring up what this function does. So this function finds the distance of a point to a given geometry. So right here, we see that the geometry has to be the first input. So we're going to take this geometry, this curve, plug it into input three here. So with Houdini and these um, inputs, it starts at zero, one, two, three. So we're going to type three there as our first input. And then it's asking for a vector origin. So this can be wherever we want to sample basically a position. So in this case, since I'm operating on these points right here, this wrangle is going to run over every single point. And so what I want to tell it is the position for the given point. So I'm going to type at P, which will then recognize the position variable on each one of these points. Okay, comma, and now let's check the next input. Um, we can pass by reference a, a prim number, a prim number meaning the prim number that is the incoming geometry. In our case, this curve is only has only one prim, so we don't need to, uh, well, actually what, what we would get back from this function is a prim number of what point it sampled, but there's only going to be one prim, so we don't need it. So we're just going to put zero there. And then the last input is the UV attribute that we're going to get. So that's why we declared this here, because I'm going to type this in to this function here. And once this function runs, it's going to then, by using the position of one of these given points, so let's look at this point, let's say 45, it's going to look at the curve right here, Point 45 is going to look at this curve and it's going to say where along this whole primitive curve is your u value essentially or your prim uv value and that's that's what this is right here so i'm going to just type float disk because that's what we would actually get back but we don't actually need this what we want is the the u attribute from this vector right here so i'm going to type in a uh, float at u and this is what you can do in order to store a float attribute these ones that are highlighted purple just are local variables here so they don't actually write data to your geometry. But if I say float u is equal to prim uv dot x, I'm going to get the first value of this vector. Now we can see that this, uh, this geometry has another attribute called u. And if we click on our geometry spreadsheet, we see that point zero has the u of zero. And we can go down all of our points and look that point 45 that we're at, it's at its u value is about 0.81. So along the whole distance of this curve, 45 lines up to about 0.81. So that's important because next, let me drop down another attribute wrangle. We're going to then make an offset. So 
I'm going to make a new local variable and call it my updated u, and it's going to be equal to my f at u value plus any offset that I want to determine. So this channel float offset function right here is going to create a parameter that then I can slide easily to control the offset. But I'm going to put both of those in parentheses, and I'm going to actually mod this by 1.0. The reason I'm doing that is because if I drop down the slider, okay, and let's say I have my 0.45, that was a U value of 8.1. If I add more than 0.19, so, so let's say I add 0.205, that would be more than one. So the value would stretch farther, but there is no higher value than one on the U curve. So we want it to essentially wrap around. So to show that, if you're not familiar with modding things, if I did, let's see, um, we've got 0.81 plus 0.205, is equal to 1.015 and let's mod that by 1.0 so that means that returns a value of 0 0.1 which would be a valid u on this curve instead of traveling farther into an unknown number that we don't have it will just continue to travel along this line so that's why we want to mod that there so now that we have an updated u we can use another function called prim uv and let's take a look at what this function does if i click on that and hit f1 this function takes in a geometry. So again, that's why I plug this in here. So we're gonna put down the third input and we want an attribute name. So in this case, we want from this curve, we want to extract a position. So that in Houdini would just be P, capital P, because um, every geometry has a given P attribute. Um, again, we don't need prim num. So we're just gonna type in zero. And then we need to give it a vector uvw and in this case we can actually just pass in our updated u value and that is going to essentially make a vector on the fly where it will put the updated u value and then it will just be followed by two zeros so that's essentially what it's going to do under the hood when we pass that in okay so now i can just say my given position of my points on this curve is equal to this uh, value that we're getting back because we requested the position value so this prim uv function is going to look up the curve it's going to look up the position at the given u and give that back to us and now since we're on the geometry uh these points right here what we're going to then do is set that position to um to the position that we get back so at p is talking about these points right here and we're requesting this p from this curve so hopefully that makes sense and we've got an error there just because i didn't type that right so bam now we're good so if we see this slider now moves these points perfectly along the curve and it just continuously goes on forever. All right, so now that we have the points moving along the curve, we want to copy the track points on to these given points like this. But, oh, I plugged this in the wrong end, but we want to plug the points in here. We plug the track piece here. There we go. But we see we have a problem here. The track pieces are not oriented along the curve. So in order to solve that, what I'm going to do is attribute transfer onto these points right here those normals that we had originally had so i'm going to put in here n and now those normals are here wherever we move the points okay but we see that doesn't totally solve the problem because we need an up vector as well an up vector is recognized in houdini as to how to orient itself um, with a normal as well so i'm going to say v at up so this means I can write a vector, and since I'm using that symbol, it's going to write this data to the geometry is equal to at n, which are the normals. And then I'm going to say at normal is equal to one in the z direction. And the reason I did that is because now we have the normals pointing that way. And if you click on this i here, and then click on your given attribute, it will here in this visualize tab create a given uh, visualizer for that attribute. So we see our up vector is pointing that way. So now with that up vector along the curve there and the side attribute as the normal, it will now orient these pieces of the track correctly onto these points. And then you can move them so we get a nice um, free-flowing geometry moving along this curve. So there you have it. That's how you can move pieces of geometry or points along a given curve in Houdini. Now, if there's an easier way to do this, totally comment below, let me know. I'd love to learn. Um, and if you had any other questions, feel free to put them down. But until next time, we'll see you later.